the NFL, how they block, and can Indianapolis find a way to stop that run game? This game is being broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. Indianapolis won the toss and elected to defer. Colts playing down here in the Dallas area for the first time since 2006. Pat McAfee will kick it in the direction of Dwayne Harris. A pair of 10 and 4 teams are underway with a touchback. McAfee, best in the league at delivering touchbacks, and that's what he does to begin this one. Here's Tony Romo. Says it's the best he's felt all year. There's been all this talk about Murray and his hand injury. Well, Romo, of course, has had his own issues, so it's been kind of a quiet story for him this week with his back and all. But he told us he's feeling great. On the right side, however, Doug Free is going to be inactive with an ankle, so Parnell moves into that position. And Murray does indeed get the start as you see him lined up right behind Romo. There he is. They're going to have two tight ends to start it. Hannah will join Witten. Witten will slide over to that right side. And the Cowboys first now, like it has been many times this year, a handoff to DeMarco for three. Let's meet Greg Minuski's defense. And up front, Arthur Jones with his first start since week one. He's missed some time this season. Werner, we met with him yesterday, the second year linebacker out of Florida State. Impressive. Bonte Davis, he's had his own health issues, but he's just fine. To give it a go here today, Murray's already coming out after one play, replaced by Joseph Randall. We'll call it second and eight. And Romo across the middle to Bryant for a first down. Gains nine. And Randall did a good job protecting his quarterback. Well, both of the backup running backs do a good job of protecting in passing situations for Tony Romo. Comes up inside, nice job of stepping out and get, getting Eric Walden. That's a big key. You see this Colts defense? What's the big key for them today? Just like I said in the opening, can they find a way to shrink the field in the running game and keep it inside so those big defensive linemen can make the tackles? Murray shuttles back in and again is called on. This time he smacked around for no game. Of course, what a sensational season it's been for Murray. By far the number one rusher in the league, has the most carries, most rush touchdowns, leads the league in scrimmage yards. You look at that, 1,687. It's a lot of ones here when you talk about this offensive line. It's athletic, it's powerful. I think it's the best one in the NFL. That's why it's such a key against this Indianapolis defensive line and outside linebackers. Second and 10, and Romo stepping up. Tucking it under and sliding for about seven or eight. Well, he pushed that to the limit. Really good job. Tony Romo is excellent in the pocket. Goes forward, goes sideways, but then tries to get that extra yard. And that was close to Quell Jackson. Gets a pretty big hit on him. Right away, though, you look at this Indianapolis defense. They're not going to sit back because if you sit back against this Cowboy offense, I promise you, you will lose. They will march down the field on you. Here they are again, going to fake the blitz or maybe the cover. Best in the league on third down against the best third down defense, and Dallas wins the first of those matchups today. Well, let's see this. They didn't give him the spot I quite thought he would get. Witten marked really close to the chain. They go ahead and signal, move it. Move it on down, first down. Yeah. Pretty quick judgment there as I look at both chains on each side of the field. He's definitely past the yard marker. So you can tell he's past it. I think the official mark is on the Cowboys sideline. Third and short. Cowboys see a lot of that because of the run game. And again, Murray with his third handle. Nothing there. He'll lose a yard that time. Well, there was a big key. Jason Garrett interested himself in seeing how DeMarco Murray car carries that football today. Jason Garrett, and a remarkable season, leading these Cowboys who, after losing right on this field, week one against the 49ers, all kinds of dire 
predictions about Dallas maybe being a four or five win team this year. Now they have 10, looking for the division. Second and 11, and Romo again's going to scramble with it, and he's got first down yardage. And reaches out for an extra, an extra yard as he was being chased by Zach Kerr, picks up 13. Yeah, it's a play action pass. I think Tony Romo kind of worried about the blitz, and that's why it looked like it was a busted play. DeMarco Murray saw the blitz, the heck with the fate, protect the quarterback. That was a good job by him. So a couple things, DeMarco Murray ran the football, looked pretty comfortable, and did a good job picking up the blitz that time. Well, they want to be aggressive, Indianapolis does. They didn't put in that equation that Tony Romo could move out of the pocket. Tony with 21 yards on the ground, that's a season high rushing for him. Here's Murray, and he is bounced back, hit quickly by Chapman, and now that's four carries for Murray for no yards. Football fans, you can add some extra competition to the postseason. Pick this year's playoff winners and you can win $5,000 with CBS Sports Perfect Playoffs game. See the rules and sign up cbsports.com slash perfect. You know, a lot of things to look at here too, Jim. This, there's two pretty good corners here for the Indianapolis Colts and they're going to have to play some single coverage on Des Bryant. Vontae Davis, Greg Toller, how would they hold up? Dunbar came into the game, moved to a slot, and that's batted down and then chased for a moment by Bjorn Werner. Yeah, look at him. How about that? Bjorn Werner outside, such a key in this game. 92, reads it. 280 pounds at one time, now to, down to 255, Jim, and playing the outside edge. A big key in today's game. He left Germany in the 10th grade to come over and play football and finish his education. Played a little flag football over there. He was a wide receiver and a safety. He's a big guy, no matter what the age, playing those sets. Third and 11 for Dallas. Swing it over and look at the Colts defended. Freeman, Jarrell Freeman. Just pancakes Randall and a flag comes down right in the area of the hit. as Freeman made the tackle four yards behind the line of scrimmage. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct taunting number 50 of the defense. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot, first down. You know, you make a great play and then you take it too far and you give the Cowboys a first down when you were going to take them off the field. Yeah, you were. It's, it's really could be a game changer. He had time to protect himself. I thought maybe it was going to be a personal foul hitting him in the helmet because he couldn't, didn't have time to Dunbar to protect themselves. But there's the taunting, talking over the top of him. Well, first, too, Dunbar was very fortunate to pin that football up against his shoulder pad. It was close to coming out. Well, they want to stop that, Jim. That's still, in my eyes, a very, very oh, tough call oh, against the Colts. There's Murray finally getting a little running room, and he's got 10 running behind Jeremy Parnell for 11. It's such a tough running game to defense. They go sideways, and if you over-pursue that time, it looks like DeQuell Jackson's a little out of position. He gets blocked, and DeMarco Murray... You know, if he has 100 decisions to make in the run game, about 99 out of those 100, he makes the right decision. Five first downs on this opening drive of the game, already picked up by the Cowboys. And now from the Colts, 26. There's Murray starting to get comfortable. And he wiggles to about the 21. A couple of plays ago as he was shuttling in and out. Kind of shakes his hand for a moment. You know, he's a guy that loves to use the left hand as a stiff arm, and he, yeah, he tried. instinctively I don't was going to go with it, and they just kind of slid it above the shoulder. And then something in his body says, don't hit him. Yeah, don't touch him. So, but it's still a good start. It's amazing. Surgery on Monday, out here playing on Sunday. A plate and screws inserted on Monday. Yeah, six days later, he's on the field. I'd be out for a month. Second and six. 
Down to the five. Jason Witten has the Cowboys set up. Goal to go from the five. Gain of 17. Well, when you put all your energy in stopping the run, that means you're going to have receivers down the field, one-on-one. -on -one. And Jason Witten, Tony Romo, that connection. How about the timing? How about the ball placement? When you have Tony Romo saying to us, I'm playing the best I've ever played, that, that's a lot because he's not a guy that breaks, doesn't just so, say those things nonchalantly. He has really been on throwing the football. Showing these days that he knows the game cold with all the years of experience. Gonna hand it off to Murray. And Murray looked like he might have a chance to take it home, but he's pushed back after one. That was a good tackle by Tolbert. That's a good job. A lot of good things have really happened for the Colts defense. They're making some tackles. You know, they're trying to be aggressive. Of course, the personal or the taunting. There's Greg Minuski, defensive coordinator. Very aggressive, knows what he's up against. The best offensive line in football. And the quarterback and wide receiver to go along. Three tight ends, 15th play of this drive that's taken over eight minutes. Second and goal, flag on it, touchdown to Bryant. Well, the official's waving as if he's going to take it away. Illegal motion, number 29 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Yeah, if you're going to go in motion, then stay in motion. Here he goes. He's coming forward. So not enough time to stop and reset. You've got to be stopped for one full second. That was Tony Romo's fault, not DeMarco Murray. You know, the quarterback's got to judge it. Give him time to get ready. Brings the football back to the nine. Second and goal to go. Like to welcome the audience that saw the Texans come up big today. Victory over Baltimore. Jim Nanceville sends Tracy Wolfson. Cowboys have taken the opening kickoff and kept it now for over eight minutes. And they're in the end zone for the touchdown to Terrence Williams. Well, it's a perfect play for him. Cole Beasley on the inside is going to go here and then watch Des Bryant come underneath. I'm sorry, Terrence Williams. But it's it. You see the coverage. It's two on two to so that side of the field. That is really tough. And Toller not able to stay with him. Williams' seventh touchdown of the season. The Cowboys drive 80 yards in 15 plays and lead at 7 0. Again, it appeared to be stopped near midfield, but the taunting call against Freeman gave the Cowboys a new set of downs. They took advantage. Rumble with a touchdown pass. Eight minutes, 24 seconds, the longest by time. Opening drive for the Cowboys in over seven years. Man, I'll tell you what, that, that helps your defensive stats, doesn't it? You know, for the Dallas Cowboys, sit over there for half the over half the quarter and Typical Cowboys drive, dominating the line scrimmage. Bailey sends it through the back of the end zone. Now we'll see Andrew Luck for the first time. Luck and Robo. They're meeting for the very first time today. The Chefs of Legends hospitality here at AT&T Stadium, the only NFL space with its own pastry kitchen. As the Cowboys Drove down and scored a touchdown on the opening drive. Now we finally see Andrew Luck playing in AT&T Stadium for the first time in his three-year NFL career. Let's start out with both Dwayne Allen and Kobe Fleener, his two superb tight ends on the field. Going to run it with Heron, who was tackled for a loss. Brought back about four or five yards by Tyrone Crawford. Loss of five, they'll rule it. All right, on the right side, they've got two subs in today. Thornton and Sherilus are out. So you got Lewis and Nixon. And Dante Moncrief gets the call for T.Y. Hilton, who sits with a hamstring. 
Three wide, all to the left here for Luck and the Colts, second and 15. And Heron runs at the first two plays. This time he's got one into the hands of Hitchens. This Dallas defense of Rod Marinelli up front. The likes of Mincy and then Crawford you saw on the first stop for a big loss. McLean has got to be a candidate for comeback player of the year in the league this year. And Skandrick giving this team some leadership in that secondary. The Cowboys have struggled this year at home, three and four at home, but this crowd is very lively at the start of this one. Third and 14, and they run it yet again, this time with Richardson, and the Colts will come off the field, netting a loss of two on their three downs. Yeah, terrible series by the Colts. They were hoping to come out and run the football and slow this game down even more. You know, you got to worry about it, Jim. You talked about it. They got a new right side of the line. Lance Lewis played, but Xavier Nixon at right tackle. They want to protect the quarterback. Very safe. And a good start for the Cowboy defense. Well, they wanted to see this game slow down. The Cowboys offense did a good job of doing yeah. that. Maybe not that way. <laughs> yeah. So McAfee to punt. And he's going to fake it and throw it. And it's dropped. He had him wide open. Dewey McDonald was in the flat and wide open. McAfee was on target. Well, it's another game changer. He's there. He's wide watching as the football gets near. He turns his head even before it gets close to his hands. And in a situation like this, you just want to catch it with both arms, cradle it, and fall to the ground because it's such a dangerous situation. That was on fourth and 11. The Cowboys take over at the 19. They lead the league as a team in drops the 36th oh. of the year. The Cowboys have the fewest drops of any team. So this is a team that, of course, onside kicked a couple times early in the season successfully. I'm not talking about desperation onside kicks. Right. With McAfee successfully pulling those off. Well, listen. Three were, times and back. They were ready for that, Jim. In other words, that was a good call to change everything in this game. The play was there, but they didn't execute it. And Dallas takes over in the red zone. One for the quick strike, Romo to the end zone, and it's pulled down for the touchdown. And a flag. Des Bryant on the receiving end of it. Right off a of three touchdown the game. Pass. Holding number 28 defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. Well, it's looked very similar to what we saw last Sunday night in Philadelphia with Des Bryant. The run game is so good. You have to do this every once in a while on the outside. You have to play Des Bryant just you against me. And you found out, and I'm sure Greg Toller found out in person, this guy is bigger, stronger. Every His presence is big, and he just goes up over the top and makes the catch. 14th touchdown catch of the season for Bryant, who leads the league in that category. The fake punt. Should have been there. The Cowboys take advantage, just one play later. Two touchdowns in two minutes and 13 seconds. And since the beginning of the 2012 season, Dez now with the most touchdown catches over that span, including the most this year alone. Well, when he's out there one-on-one, -on -one, you gotta you gotta play the one. And when you do, Dez Bryant gonna light you up. Two Romo touchdown passes, too, that gives him now 30 on the season. Luck hasn't even attempted a pass yet. His, his punter has. We're back with Dallas already up 14-0. The Colts last week clinched their division with a win over Houston. Cowboys take the NFC East if they're victorious here today. Luck swings it over to Knicks. And he's got five. 
Well, Jim, let's go back and look at that first down, first touchdown, free D. Look at this look. Williams coming underneath. The, the defenders actually pick themselves, and you look at it from every side, and, man, it looks pretty easy from that view. Good job by Tony Romo. Excellent play call. And again, many, many times you're going to say it today. What do you do? You try to stop the run or the pass against the Cowboys? Hey, hey. You might stop one. Hard to stop the other. A little free D they have here. The technology at AT&T Stadium as they go with Heron for two. He's wrapped up by Hitchens. And the Colts will have a third and three coming up. You know, it's hard to believe the Cowboys have the record here at home that they do because their offense is terrific. The offensive line, the most consistent unit in the NFL. And this defense, it plays with passion. They hustle. They don't make many mental mistakes. A lot of good things happening on this Cowboys team. And they get their first first down. And this opening quarter with three minutes to go as Luck pass is broken up by Carr. He was trying to find Kobe Fleener, who looks around for a flag, but he won't find one. Yeah, it's just a matchup that does not favor the Indianapolis Colts. A little bit of a pull, but that's nothing. Didn't affect the pass or the route by Kobe Fleener. And, you know, Jim, that's what you get. T.Y. Hilton out of the game. You might get some matchups to favor the Cowboy defensive backs. Well, I trust McAfee will be punting on this occasion. Well, they're double teaming you. No, I was going to say they're going to double team the outside pass receivers. And that is some boot. Harris goes all the way back near the 10. And is able to return at about 14 or 15. After a 61-yard punt, the new triplets in Dallas, Romo and Bryant and Murray come back out. Already up 14-0. In the owner's box today, Mrs. Jones there in the second row carrying on a conversation. Governor Christie taking in a Cowboys game for the second straight week. Charlotte Anderson, the Jones daughter, and Emmett Smith. And Randall gets the carry out to the 30 for five. Well, Jim, let's go back and look at our free D here at AT&T Stadium. The safeties rotate. Tony Romo looks to down the middle. Then he sees, oh, I got Des Bryant out here one-on-one. -on -one. Look at that fight going on. And man, can he go up and make it look easy? And you were saying earlier, we saw that last week against the Eagles. When you give them that situation, they're going to throw it up to Des Bryant. Yeah, that catch looked almost identical to the ones he snatched out of the air last week. You saw Murray on the sideline here. Randall got the first down carry. Here's second and five for Dallas. Romo takes something off of it. And a flag is that what a catch too by Bryant. He was being covered by Vontae Davis. Prior to the pass, holding number 21 defense. Penalties declined. Result of the play, first down. 24 well, yards here, Phil. How about the hands? Yeah, boy, the hands, the size, the presence, and is he inbounds? One. Two, he's in, holds on. Yeah, I love how he can just hold it one hand, Des Bryant. Well, Chuck Pagano said we got to maybe double team him some because he's a monster. You're right, he is. Just so big and physical and determined. Now fights it for the ball. It's Randall. And slips through, and he's got another first down. Gain of 11. And Witten threw a block there to help spring him. Great job. Watch the free outside raw arm that Randall breaks there. And that's what you have to do. That was DeQuell Jackson, the middle linebacker. You want to keep that, that arm free. He did it. But can you bring a running back down with one hand? And that time they couldn't against Randall. Well, they like Randall. Remember he came in the game against the Bears, his first carry. Goes around left, made some people miss, and scored a touchdown. Another handle here. It's time for about two. A minute to go in the first quarter. Let's go back to Tracy. Well, thanks, Jim. It's like Jason Garrett told us DeMarco Murray will be limited, and he was on the sideline 
when they took the field for this drive. He didn't even have his helmet on, and then he put it back on. He sauntered over to the sideline, watched a few plays. He was grimacing in some pain, and now he's just watching. So it's something to keep an eye on, guys. Yeah, you wonder. Thank you, Tracy. 14 nothing and driving again. Do you really need to have him in the game right now? Well, you know, Jim, we talked about it. When you put Dunbar and Randall in there, they have been productive. Second and seven. Open is Randall. Romo spots him. And he's two yards short of the first. Maybe a long one. Yeah, but why would you right now, if you've got a 14-0 lead, you don't even need to run a play now until the start of the second quarter, if you got a chance to expand the lead and keep Murray on the sideline today, wouldn't surprise me to see that. Manage the game, manage your players. I'm sure that's what they're doing right now. And the fact that he keeps holding that hand up, why to keep the blood out there and keep some of the pain away from that hand? And we're through one. Tony Romo, eight out of nine in that first quarter, including a pair of touchdown passes. What a rough start for the Colts, a taunting call, and that drop leading to the Cowboy touchdown. All one-sided after one here. Ten first downs to none. Two touchdowns for Dallas, 14-0 lead. Jim Nance, Bill Sims, Tracy Wolfson. Third and one, and it's Randall, and he could have been stopped behind the line, but he's able to shake it off, pick up two in a first down. There was early contact on him, or it tried to be, the Chapman. So Randall getting uh, this series, and he's got four carries for 20 yards. Well, you want penetration in the backfield. The Colts D-line got it that time, but somebody's got to be there behind it to fill the hole and stop the run. Got him first down. Open is Beasley, who's on the way to the end zone for the touchdown, Cowboys. Well, they're making it look easy because it is easy. It's just, what do you do? They're clicking everywhere. Look at the space Cole Beasley has. LaRon Landry, the safety, was about 12 yards off of him. Tony Romo keeps the linebackers from getting underneath. And then you got to tackle him, tackle him in the open space. Very hard to do. Cole Beasley, man, has really found his spot on this football team. Well, that's his fourth touchdown of the season. Three touchdowns for Romo. Not even a full minute into the second quarter. Beasley, the homegrown kid from Little Elm High School and SMU. Cole Beasley has had four touchdown catches in the last five games. We saw him at Chicago. He had a two touchdown night. Mm -hmm. and well, he's in again here. When you got Jason Witten, Tony Romo, DeMarco Murray, and of course Des Bryant, he's going to see some favorable situations. And he, like I said, he's taking advantage of it. The Bailey kick's going to be run out by Josh Cribbs. And he is taken down short of the 20. So Tony Romo has hit his last seven passes, and three of his last five have gone for scores. He's also rushed for 21 yards. was his second one, the one to Bryant, and then this one to Beasley, who got away from Dequell Jackson. Terrence Williams caught the first score of the game. Fake toss over the top. Allen unable to hold on. And the Colts have yet another drop. Well, Anthony Spencer got that drop. Didn't go for the fake. That's the one thing about the Cowboys' defense. They might not have the overall talent to be one of the best in the league right now, but they hustle, and that play exemplifies everything. Stay in there, doesn't chase the run, and gets an incompletion because of his presence. 
The Colts are down 21, and they have not even picked up a first down. Luck on second down. Another drop. Bouncing right off the chest of Dwayne Allen. Tomorrow on CBS, tis the season for a holiday episode of NCIS Los Angeles. Join in the fun. Tomorrow at 10, 9 central only, CBS. There's T.Y. Hilton, again, not dressed, out with a hamstring. Shaking his head, wondering what in the world's going on here. Third and ten to Nix. Trying to fight through traffic. Cowboys, including Bruce Carter, have hold of him. And again, the Colts will bring out the punting unit. When you throw screens, if you want to stop them, can somebody outside make the runner hesitate? There's the hesitation. Look at the hustle from behind. Look how many guys. You try to get 11 guys into the picture. I don't know if they got 11, but they got at least nine. So the hustle, being fresh, helping the Dallas defense. So McAfee moves over. He's number three in the league in gross punting average, number two in net. Harris from the 31. Two Colts are on him, including McNary. Tony Romo off to just a terrific start here. Well, that's the way you barbecue down here in Texas. Part eight style as the Cowboys have the ball again. Three possessions, three touchdowns to this point. And they do have Murray in. So, so much for that idea that maybe they would just keep him on the sideline. He's got one. Well, here's Free D. Let's look at Cole Beasley. Look how far the defensive backs were off. And then the pursuit, you can't get mad about this. You had three guys all in one spot. Good job by Beasley just slipping past them and getting the touchdown. Andrew Luck with two completions to this point for 12 yards. Romo over 100 with three touchdowns. And he's got more with Witten. And Jason Witten takes it back to the Indianapolis side of the field. And Murray that time helped protect Romo. Here comes the blitz. Look at the guy coming around. How about that? DeMarco Murray. Murray got just enough the blitzer to allow Tony Romo a zone behind it. And look how wide open Jason Witten is. So the start of this game, Indianapolis being aggressive, coming after Dallas. And Dallas has the answer every time. Throw it to Des Bryant. Block the blitzers. Third catch for Witten. Goes for 20. Murray running it for the ninth time. Every run so far for Murray today has come on first down. And give him one. That's nine carries for 18 yards for Murray. As we take a look at today's nationwide sky cam. I think a lot of people wondered how the Colts would come out since they did lock up the division last week. And there wasn't a lot of, uh, of a chance to, to really climb out of the three spot and get any higher with both uh, New England and Denver ahead of them. Both of whom have defeated Indianapolis this season. One. Look, this score has nothing to do with the fact that they have their seating locked up. Second and nine, Romo. Dunbar, still in bounds. And it's tackled finally near the 30. Another 14 picked up. You know, Jim, people are going to say, oh, with the Colts, they had nothing to play for. They're not going to move up. They're two games behind. All that. Look at the games around the NFL today. And I'll show you the teams that had nothing to play for and what they did. So the Colts, they're emptying everything out at this Dallas offense. The Dallas offense is just too good. This offensive line is now Doug Free at right tackle. Parnell in there. They've been great. Again, Murray, first down carry. And that's his second good run of this game. 
Close to another 10, running behind Parnell and Hanna. And Martin threw a good block as well. Give him nine. Well, he can be more careful out there running the football with that left hand now because of the lead, the situation, but what it does, it gives him a feel for this game and, and really for the next because that hand's going to take a while to heal. We saw Emmett Smith earlier up in the owner's box. DeMarco needs 87 yards in this game to break Emmett's Cowboys single season rushing mark. And there's a good hit on Murray after two. Arthur Jones back in the starting lineup, defensive lineman for the Colts. Yeah, Emmett's single season rushing record of 1,773 yards in danger of falling today. Of course, he's the all-time, all-time rusher in the history of the league. The great Emmett Smith does so much for charity here in the Dallas area. Tony Romo really taking his time. You know, it's, it's the right thing to do. 21-0, slow the game down. First and 10. Murray, he's got it outside. And he's near the 11. It's so hard to keep him inside. Watch out here. Jason Witten gets Newsom, and Newsom cannot, what they call, set the edge. Why, why is that important? Because you want to shrink the running lanes for the running backs so the inside linebackers and the defensive linemen can make the tackle. Once he gets outside, it's going to be a big game. Eight twenty to go in quarter number two, and the Cowboys trying to take it for the fourth time to the end zone. Second and two, and falling forward for one is Murray. You know, one thing that's changed a little already, Jim. I don't think you'd be surprised by this that. Um, they're putting two defensive backs looking at Des Bryant now. Because one is not enough. This is the part of the field, too, where you wouldn't be surprised to see Romo go back to him again. So he's 45 away from the Emmett single season cowboy record. Of course, Emmett just peeled off so many outstanding seasons. One second on the play clock, third and one. Romo with time to Witten, and Witten's down inside the one. Well, it looks like he's covered, but Tony Romo just waits, and it just sticks the football in there. The Quell Jackson is right next to him. Watch this, you go inside. Here he is, he's locked up. All you need is a little space. Nice job of just a just a amount of push off by Jason Witten to get open in a good throw. Cowboys are going to go with a fullback, Tyler Klutz, and a tailback in Murray. Murray, who had two touchdowns on the ground against Philadelphia on Sunday night, he's got 11 on the season. And get the handle here, and Murray is across for the touchdown. Really good job. Zach Martin did a good job. Leary did a, did a nice job. Butts goes in there. They're making it look too easy. Romo's only missed one throw in this game. 12 out of 13. 150 yards and three touchdowns. This first Cowboy touchdown on the ground. And not surprisingly, Murray has his 12th of the season. 28 to nothing. Romo and Dez are enjoying every minute of it. It's the Cowboys in a romp. Luck and the Colts will start at the 20. They've been blanked in this game and don't even have a first down. 
and they dropped three passes. This one really was crucial. Down 7-0, set up the Cowboys, who one play later got it in from the 19 on a throw. Two drops by Allen. They haven't even gotten past their own 30, the Colts. Well, they came in this game hoping they could run the football, protect Andrew Luck, and really help this offensive line out. But so far, no chance, no rhythm, losing the point of attack, getting overpowered, and they got to find a way to get something going. Richardson, the running back, play action fake to him. Luck, and goes to Nix for five. Hakeem Nix, the former Giant. Looked like well, that's Corey Reddy saying this is embarrassing. He's from Texas, played for the University of Texas. Right having a terrific off. year, but right line. Right line. 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 he knows when you can't affect the passer and get run on. Second and five. And luck. With the defender closing in on him, another drop. And Allen has three in this first half. Would have been a, wasn't an easy catch, but certainly was one that you got to make. Yeah, it's going to go down the field, the double tight end release. This is really well designed. I have not seen that concept. So it worked perfectly. You got the defense. They couldn't figure it out in time. They switched positions. Pressure on Luck made the football come up short. Still should have been caught. That was George Selby who applied that pressure. Third and five. Rock, rock, rock. And the Colts were not set. False start. Number 60 offense. Five yard penalty, third down. That was Lance Lewis, the right guard, getting the start in this one because Hugh Thornton's out. Well, Lance Lewis is the guy in charge of hitting the center, Harrison, and telling him when to snap it. But the crowd noise got going. A little confusion, and he stood up. And just a tougher third down situation. Third and ten. It's Reggie Wayne. Wayne. Finds the first down marker. First first down of the game for Indianapolis. Yeah, good job. To get away from the rush, protect your quarterback, another screen on third down. Good blocking down the field, but Holmes is in now at center, Jim. That's so Common Holmes is out. And Common Holmes, second year player out of Southern Cal. Drafted in the fourth round a year ago. He's had some injury issues. And they've been going with the undrafted rookie out of Florida, Harrison. Almost the entire year as Luck looks downfield. And Fleener makes the catch. We do have a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Number 71 offense. Yard penalty. That's on the right tackle, again, subbing today. Nixon in for Sherilis. Takes away the 22-yard pass play. He has 71, top of your screen. Gets caught going backwards. And just, the pass took a little longer. Anthony Spencer just kept turning the edge. And Nixon, finally, it took so long, had to grab him. But you can throw the football on this Cowboys defense. The 30... 23rd in the league against the pass. They're not a great pass rushing unit. You can get the time and find guys open deep down the field. It's Moncrief for no game. And that defense so far in this game has given up only 28 yards passing, 29 total yards by the Colts. Brandon Carr on the outside, the defensive backs, I will say this for him, really good job by Brandon Carr keeping his outside arm free and making the tackle. They are aggressive in coverage, and they all are aggressive going for the tackle. Rod Marinelli, he just believes, hustle, know your job, and they work on tackling every single day in practice. It shows when you watch them play. It's second and 20. And 
And that's Richardson. So, can I ask you a question, Jim? So I was asked this in the pregame today. A lot of people say this. You know, can the Cowboys handle prosperity? You know, now they've had success. Will they go to their head? <laughs> they have. What would you say to that? Well, I think they've answered that. They've answered uh, that. Already with 28 points. Oh, worn out cliche. Yeah. So whenever it does go bad against the Cowboys, oh, well, see, we knew they couldn't handle it. Third and 11. Giving chase. Now luck to Fleener. And he is going to be stopped a couple short. When it comes to the Cowboys, a lot of people want to make some fast, hard conclusions about them. I know after they got beat by the 49ers week one on this field, everyone was saying this team is going to struggle, might be the worst team in the league. It goes on and on. This coach right here has had so much scrutiny when actually he should be somebody we're talking about now for coach of the year. Oh, I agree, because I think it was unanimous across the board with everybody in the media that the Cowboys, not only did they lose this year, would be one of the worst teams in the NFL. McAfee just missed the big board. And, of course, he also... He missed the ball. Yeah, he did. Off the, not a good kid. Off the sideline here. Let's see where they finally come all the way up to the 30. Three. This is 29-yard boot for one of the best. Some of the Cowboys art collection here at the stadium, and that's been something that Mrs. Jones is very proud of. Gene taking that on. They've done such a wonderful job of dressing up this beautiful stadium. Okay, the Cowboys have three minutes to go here in the half. Murray does not start this series at running back. It's Randall instead, and he gets it on the toss. And he was met pretty quickly by Leron Landry for a loss of one. And the Cowboys, with a victory today, would take the NFC East. And it's been since 2009, the last time the Cowboys were in the playoffs. They've won the division title twice in the last 15 years. Trying to lock it up here, and they're off to just a huge start. Second and 11. And it's Beasley. We're about five, and we'll bring it to the two-minute warning here. Who saw this coming? Dallas 28, Indianapolis nothing. Coming out of the two-minute warning, Dallas with a third and six. Encroachment, number 97 defense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Maybe third and one, Arthur Jones was the one who jumped. Yeah, they were going to blitz that time. That's why Arthur Jones was on edge. He thought he was going to have a chance to get there. And I know they were going to blitz because everybody covering the wide receivers was backed off to try to make Tony Romo throw it short, then make the tackle. Of course, now that all goes away. Hard to get this Cowboy team, this offense, you know, in situations where you can take advantage of them because of their run game, because of the offensive line, everything. The scenarios that you draw up always favor the Cowboy offense. They bring in a new package off the penalty. They've got clutch at fullback. Randall the running back. Randall running for it. And he is taken down by Jackson. And the Cowboys will have to punt. And timeout called by the Colts with 154. Who knew that Santa was a Cowboy fan? Chris Jones gets to make a cameo in this game. And that sails out of bounds. Colts will have two timeouts and 146 to try to muster something before the intermission. That AFC playoff picture is still a lot of things to be settled. New England clinched 
a first round bye with its squeaker over the Jets today, 17-16. Denver, uh, Denver and Cincinnati play tomorrow night. Pittsburgh's in the playoffs, clinched a berth today with its win over Kansas City. And San Diego, if it wins next Sunday at Kansas City, the Chargers would be in. How about that? After last night's game, what a job. Phillip Rivers. False start. Number 71 offense, five-yard penalty, first down. With a lot of reports swirling that Rivers is playing with some pretty severe back issues. Yeah, you know, I, I, I believe that because last night he did have a little trouble getting started physically, I thought, in the game. But, man, they threw it so much, he got hot, warmed up. And once again, Phillip Rivers came through in the clutch. We've seen him do it many times. Came back from 21 down, just an amazing... Come back by the Chargers as Luck is able to unload it. And it's Heron with the catch. And they're going to hustle after the seven yards. Well, he didn't want to get in this type of game because we just saw it. The hit on Andrew Luck went down to the field on the turf hard. Flag out. Catch made. Kobe Fleener. Illegal formation. Number 71 was not on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Getting obvious passing situations, which we're in right now. Anthony Spencer got a second chance against Nixon and gets the big hit. Then what does he do the very next play? He gets in the backfield. Does he get close enough to the line of scrimmage, Jim, because he's worried about the speed on the outside? So you back up and you get the flag. This is the second penalty of this first half against Nixon. Second and 13, they go ground. Trying to surprise the Cowboys and Heron. The only three. You know, you look at this, Dallas could think about calling a timeout, but no, they don't. You, you've got to respect Andrew Luck in this passing offense. They're so dynamic. You call a timeout, but you could be helping them. Third and 10 and Luck. Nice catch. That was Nicks, and you've noticed that Nicks has stepped up his play in recent weeks. Definitely looks like he's in great game shape and making some tough catches. Timeout, Indianapolis. Hakeem Nicks with a great grab, his fourth of this game, has given the Colts just their second first down. Inside of a minute to go second quarter. And again, they're after Luck. He's able to flip it over to Heron, but a flag is on the field. And Heron advances to the 39 of the Cowboys. Goes for 22. Great job by Andrew Luck. Got away from the rush. Illegal use of the hands to the face. Number 26 defense. Penalties decline. Result of the play, first down. I know one thing. They're going to help. have to help out Nixon at right tackle. Sterling Moore on the outside. That was legal. Hit him in the shoulder pad, but looked like it hit him in the face. That's why the flag was thrown. First time today the Colts have advanced past midfield. They put a tight end over there next to Nixon to maybe give him a little more time against that outside pass rusher. Pocket seal. Luck down the field. Nearly intercepted. And that was Carr. Almost came away with it, but Moncrief broke it up. Coming up, the Verizon halftime report with JB and the crew. All the latest scores, the highlights, the first half analysis, some playoff talk about who got in already today. Talked about the Steelers. Packers clinch the berth. Will be some big games week 17. Second and 10. And it's clear. Getting out of bounds at about the 35. Good job by Andrew Luck getting rid of the football. Another free runner. Henry Melton's coming at him. But listen, this is where the Colts are dangerous. Even with the score the way it is, 28 to nothing. 
when you keep putting the football in Andrew Luck's hands, he's a down-the-field thrower. He looks for big plays. And don't forget, the more he throws, the slower that pass rush is going to get. Third and six with 29 seconds. They were around them and forced the throw into the ground. But another flag. Flags in the secondary. Holding. Number 42 defense. Five yard penalty and automatic first down. Called on Barry Church. Going against Fleener, puts both arms out. Yeah, he puts the arm bar, so that's an easy call. The one thing, why did they want to run the football today, this Colts offense? Of course, to protect the quarterback, try to protect the young offensive line. But also, when you pass, if you watch the Cowboys defensive line, and Rod Marinelli, he is a special. They change positions, they cross. And it's very tough on any offensive line, especially one inexperienced like the Colts. First and ten for the Colts. Approaching 20 seconds to go. And Heron with a wiggle and a gain of about eight. And a timeout. Indianapolis. That's the last one for the Colts. 17 seconds to go. Ball at the 22. So Indianapolis cannot stop the clock again. Luck has hit nine of his last ten. And they put up something before halftime. Luck stands in there, goes to the end zone, and he's intercepted! It's intercepted by Wilcox. Who's running it across the 30. Nix is waiting for him at the 40, so he'll just fall and close out the half. That's the first turnover of the game for either side, and Luck is angry at himself. Well, he should be. You know, you want to get three here, and they're playing safe defense all the way. And I think he's throwing it to the back of the end zone, thinking his guy will go up there and knock it down, but they were waiting on it. They had the middle covered, double team both outsides. And you got to be careful to protect yourself, too. J.J. Wilcox with his third pick of the season. His second year in safety out of Georgia Southern. And let's go down to Tracy. Coach, everything clicking right now. What can you say about the start that your team had here in the first half? Well, it's just a start is what I can say, and that's what our players are going to hear right now. we got to treat it like a 0-0 and get back to work coming out here in the second half. Any thought of playing it safe with DeMarco in the second half? No, DeMarco will continue to play just like the other guys. We need to finish this ball game. Thanks a lot. Okay. They're up 28, and they're 30 away from the NFC East title. 28 nothing Cowboys. The Verizon Halftime Report is coming up after this message and a word from your local station. Complete domination the first two quarters for the Dallas Cowboys leading at 28 to nothing. Here's a look at the Bows game changer. Romo to Des Bryant, 14th. Touchdown catch of the season for Dez. Romo throws for three touches. Murray scores the other one. And now the Colts will receive the third quarter kick after deferring at the start. Josh Cribbs all the way to the back of the end zone. And Bailey sends it through the back. You saw this one coming just like this, didn't you? Sure. Yeah, sure you did. I, I can always see all these games, how they're going to turn out. <laughs> what about the second half while you're at it? Well, yeah, how about that? Okay. Listen, there, there's no secret for the Colts here in the second half. They got dominated physically. And when you play a team like the Cowboys, as good as they are, you got to be perfect. They made three errors that were just to themselves. The interception at the end of the first half, that was three points. The taunting penalty and the drop fake punt. Those could have changed this game around. A 
Luck 12 out of 18, 12 out of 18 in the first half for 99 yards with that pick. And that's Nix with his fifth catch. Let's go back to Tracy. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. I asked Chuck Pagano how he digs himself out of this hole, and he just said, we couldn't get anything done offensively. He sighed. He said he doesn't have any answers. He said the most frustrating part, though, was the penalties, six of them. And then I asked him about the fake punt. He said, we just didn't execute. He said, as for the defense, we need to challenge their wide receivers, Jim. Second and six, and that's tipped at the line and intercepted. The Cowboys' Hitchens comes away with it. So Luck picked off twice in a three-pass sequence going back to the end of the first half. Well, it's the push inside. That's Nick Hagan. And sometimes it's not about hitting the quarterback and sacking him. It's about the pressure. And when you push the pocket back, it makes it hard to throw over the defensive lineman. Boy, Andrew Luck, he flies in there every time there's an interception try to make the tackle. Hitchens has had to play all three linebacker spots for the Cowboys defense and what a job he has done coming in and playing very well. We were talking to Jason Garrett even back a few weeks ago in Chicago before a Thursday night game talking about how Hitchens a rookie out of Iowa has emerged and that's his first NFL interception. We've had, of course, all kinds of injuries at the linebacking position. First and ten, and it is Murray for a couple. He had a 40-yard first half with a touchdown. Well, it was interesting what Jason Garrett said. They're going to keep him in there and let him play. And Look, they went all week. What did Jason Garrett tell us on, uh, yesterday, Jim, that, well, I read in the papers after the, he's going to play. You know, we'll see. But he got out there. DeMarco Murray worked in practice Wednesday, Thursday, did more on, on Friday, and quite an accomplishment to get to this game and play the way he has. Second and eight. He has a Colt waiting for him right away, Bjorn Werner. Well, he was actually telling his coach on the plane ride home from Philadelphia, I'm going to play next week. And he says, you can bank on it. Don't even, don't even think about it. Well, you know, there's something to that. You know what he did? He just set a mindset, and he was determined. And, of course, he didn't know how the surgery was going to go, but once they said it went fine and says a lot about this team, says a lot about him, but the determination, they, they've been determined all year long, this Dallas Cowboys team, especially on the offensive side, it's carried this football team the big reason why they're 10-4. and four. With that street to the left, this is Williams in motion. Third and 14, Romo. And he's going to be sacked back at 34 by Arthur Jones. Didn't take a chance. That's a good job. The sack was big. It's going to make it a long field goal. But nobody opened down the field as you look. And the one thing about Tony Romo, he knows when to go down. You watch the receivers down the field. The coverage is good. But we talked about that, too. When you know you can't get away, get down. Don't take the extra hits. Stay healthy, and that's one of the reasons why he has been in this lineup most of the year. It's 52 yards. Made his climb out of six for the year from outside of 50, but not this time. And the Colts will be able to take over at the 42. Bailey wide right from 52. Unable to cash in off the interception. Best starting point of the day for the Colts, who are reporting that Dwayne Allen has a knee issue, questionable to return, and Richardson is met behind the line by Rolando McLean, as well as Spencer, in a loss of two. Now, this has been the good stuff for Andrew this year. Tops in the league in passing yards, most touchdown passes. And at times, it hasn't been so good. 16 picks, including two of those today. Well, he's an aggressive thrower. I do like that. You take that and pressure, two reasons why so many interceptions. Second and 12, and Wayne makes the catch, and McLean slams him down. It'll be third down. We got a Cowboy injured back at the 31. And that's Henry Melton, the former Bear. They signed as a free agent in the offseason. The 
Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge across the Trinity River in Davis. Watch this tackle a moment ago by Rolando McLean. And Jason Garrett told us every time he makes a tackle, he makes a statement. We saw it there. Melton, by the way, was able to walk off under his own power. Third and five for the Colts. Who have managed only four first downs in this game. Pressure on Locke, and he got it away. But it'll lose yardage, and a flag is out again as Richardson makes the grab. And again, it's McLean making another statement with a tackle. Holding, number 62 offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Holding call on Holmes. Well, Andrew Luck, man, could have been got hit in the face mask, which anytime you hit the face mask of the helmet of the quarterback, supposed to be a penalty. But he has been hit many times here today. Hitting the ground, people always around his arm when he's throwing the football. A lot of dangerous situations for your franchise quarterback. And you can see that Luck, when he saw the flag, thought it was going to be against the Cowboys. He thought they were going to call that. McAfee's punt bounces in. And on the far side, we've got another penalty marker. So we'll check the marker. Here's Luck again. Cowboys have been in his face most of the game. Field kicking team number 57. Five-yard penalty will be enforced from the 20-yard line. First down, Dallas. McNary flagged for that, so the Cowboys will have a little better starting point than the 20. Matchup of Devils, Sun Devils, Blue Devils. The Sun Bowl, one of the great long-time relationships between the CBS Television Network and anyone out there. We continue our annual visit to El Paso coming up Saturday, and we look forward to CBS Sports ringing in the bowl season with Arizona State and Duke. And all of our friends down in El Paso through so many years, Jimmy Rogers and many others. As we'll be back to broadcast that here on CBS. First and 10 with Murray. Still not down. Kind of foot away from the first down the way they're going to mark it. You know, we've seen the Colts a few times this year, including against uh, Pittsburgh. And against, look at this, against Peyton, Ben, and Tom. Manning, Roethlisberger, and Brady. They allowed 11 touchdowns in over 500 yards a game and 41 points a game. In all the rest of the game, the other 11 games, they gave up 10 touchdowns total. 11 in those three matchups. Well, the defense has got some great numbers against some of the other competition. Third down defense, completion percentage, all that stuff. But you're right, against the good quarterbacks, they've struggled. And Murray's got the first down. Of course, Roethlisberger beat him up for six touchdown passes. Well, Murray up to 48 yards with that run. They do not have that elite pass rusher. You know, they have Robert Mathis out for the year. He could change his defense dramatically because he could give them some pressure when they need it in obvious passing situations. And then you're, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Now you're forced to be aggressive. And when you're aggressive against good receivers like here today, hard to cover them one-on-one -on -one down the field. First down, Dallas. Play action fake. And Romo with sealed pocket is able to again hook up with Des Bryant for a first down right in front of Vontae Davis pretty easy to see what he does when they throw in these situations he's going to look deep in case they play for the run they don't good job of the Colts staying back so Tony Romo oh my gosh look at the space he had to throw the football I mean there's not a there's not a defender within five yards of Tony Romo by the way, Tony's only, again, thrown one incompletion in this game. He's hit his last 12 passes. Well, he talked about it. He says, I'm piercing the ball better than I ever have. And Murray's running the ball than he, better than he ever has in any of his first three other seasons. And it starts with this offensive line that the Cowboys have emphasized in the draft in recent years. Well, look at it. Nobody around him. Oh, my God. This is really... As you see it the second time, you understand why he's only thrown one incompletion. But when he says piercing the ball, what he means 
is how it's coming out of his hand perfectly. It's, you know, it's like hitting a driver on the sweet spot every time. That's what he does when he's throwing. And he's, his fundamentals, he said they're great, and they hold up during the game. I saw Jerry and Stephen Jones with Emmett joining them now, and back to Witten. Tossed down by Freeman about a yard away. We were just looking at all those offensive linemen. They went offensive line first round three of the last four years with Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick this year, Zach Martin, and they stuck to their game plan this year. A lot of people thought, no, 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 maybe they'll go Johnny Manziel with the yeah. 16th pick. All the speculation, they went right back to the line again. That would have been a great move. That's what they needed. You know, you got one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, I know he's coming off injury, but you got to build one part of your team that is super strong. And for the Cowboys, that's the offensive line. Third and one, and they use that offensive line on short yardage and again convert. You know, but just think, as we were talking to the Cowboys, talking to Tony Romo about this offense, and he said, look, he's got the experience now. We know he's got the talent. And, and the circumstances are right for him to put up the numbers that we see. Why? Because of the offensive line. And whatever you do, he has Jason Witten, Des Bryant. And they got, they're a matchup nightmare when you play this Cowboys offense. Romo, if he gets one more completion here, would have the longest completion streak of his career. He's at 13 right now as Murray slips between defenders. Gets down to about the 33. Well, they're just overpowering him now. And you know, the will sometimes leads you as you look inside, Zach Martin, boy, nice job, just gets such contact. They're so solid in their contact, you can't get off the box. That was a big key for this defensive line of the Colts today. It has not come through. And Murray comes back out. I still can't get over what he told us a few weeks ago in Chicago, how he consumes so much water, 24 <laughs> bottles of water in the 24 hours leading up to game time. About 400 ounces is what he told us. Second and three, Romo for his streak. He's got it. A new Romo record, 14 straight completions. That one to Witten. Well, he, we've seen him have to move a couple times today in the pocket that time. Just nice moving in the pocket. Watch how he keeps his hands on the football. One of the reasons why he's so accurate is because he keeps his hands on it. He throws with his upper body, which gets his legs involved, and it's right on target. So Murray, back to the water story, gains about 10 pounds going into the game, drinking all that water. I've been trying it for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, how's it working oh, out? I'm up all night. You're gaining a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I'm getting no sleep. First and 10. This time he is taken down for a yard loss. Ron Landry comes up to make that hit as we approach five minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, this has got to be really disheartening for this Colts team. The offensive line, we knew it was beat up coming in here. I think they had a, it just goes to show you, I think the plan was terrific on both sides of the ball. But takes more than just a good plan. you got to have the guys to back it up. And today, the Cowboys just better than the Colts. Second and 11. And Romo to the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas. Jason Witten. It's everything you want. Time to throw it. Look to the right. Nobody open. And then Jason Witten going down the middle of the field against the linebacker. Watch how he looks to the right side. Doesn't like it, even though Beasley is open. But still, nobody around Tony Romo. That's impossible for Dequell Jackson to stay on Jason Witten that long. Tony Romo with his fourth touchdown pass of the game. Witten was their leading receiver last Sunday night. And he is again here today, his seventh catch for 90 yards and his fifth touchdown of the year.
on that touchdown throw, Tony Romo just broke Troy Aikman's Cowboy passing yardage record, most in franchise history. 32,961 yards. And what a play to break the record on. A touchdown pass to his buddy Witten. And the Cowboys are going to be seeing a new quarterback. Matt Hasselbeck is replacing Andrew Luck, who goes out with his lowest ever passer rating in a game of 41.7. Threw for 109 yards and picked twice. A rare off day for Andrew as Hasselbeck hands it to Heron for one. And you, uh, you've already qualified for the playoffs. You're not going to win this game. And he's already taken some punishment. So why risk your franchise player with the postseason looming? Yeah, they would keep him in if they thought, I guess, the easiest way to say it, if it was a safe atmosphere. They were worried about it coming in today. You saw Pep Hebblin, the offensive coordinator, in the score 35 to nothing. You think this Cowboy defensive line was worried about the run game? They're ready to tee off. Hasselbeck gets it over to Wayne, who is driven back with authority by Carter. Can he look at the AFC playoff picture? Patriots clinched a first round bye with their victory over the Jets. Indianapolis came in in the three position. Pittsburgh's in the playoffs with its victory today over Kansas City. San Diego will qualify next week if it wins at Kansas City. Here's the third and four, and the Colts pick up the first down. The fourth progress will be out at the 31 for Moncrief. Tracy Wolfson down on the sideline. Did check with the Colts personnel just to double check, and this is just a coach's decision as suspected. And uh, Luck just being pulled for safety's sake. And uh, again, the game out of reach with three minutes to go in the third. Heron has Carter on him. I think this Colts team, when you look at what's gone on here today, they thought that maybe they could run the football because last week when the game was on the line, they needed to get rid of some time off the clock at the end against the Houston Texans. They marched the football down the field, ate up a lot of clock, had a lot of good runs, and they were really hoping that was going to carry over into this week, and it did not. They've rushed it in this game for two yards total. Eight carries, two yards for the Colts. We have 121 yards total. That's all. Knicks. Meets up with Sterling Moore, gain of eight. Hey, if you thought your fantasy season was over, it's not. You can play for free. You can win a trip to Super Bowl 50 next season in Santa Clara. Join today, NFL.com slash playoff challenge. Hasselbeck in his 16th year out of Boston College, where it's a starter for so long in Seattle. Won an NFC title for the Seahawks, took them to the Super Bowl where they fell to the Steelers up in Detroit. And incomplete. Bobbled long enough by Wayne that the Cowboys defense actually had a play on a pick. Yeah, it's amazing, boy. It's contagious. The football, once players start, start dropping it, well, this football comes out. It's been tough for Reggie in recent weeks with a number of drops. He's got that brace on his left elbow. And they just changed that apparatus this week to try to make things easier. Fourth and three going for it. Nicks and a flag on the Cowboys. Sterling Moore, hands were tangled up. Pass interference. Number 26 defense, first down, spot of the foul. Good quick decision by Matt Hasselback. Goes down the sideline. Did look like there was some contact. Five yards. 
you get past five yards, you can't put your hands on the receiver like that. Push, pull, whatever, it's a good call. Sterling Moore comes in at corner when three wide receivers are in the game because Orlando Skandrick goes inside and plays either another receiver right now playing the tight end. Skandrick blitzing, Hasselbeck gets hit by Skandrick. The ball is ruled incomplete. And Skandrick was already taken off down the field. You just mentioned him, and he came around the right tackle and got a hit on Hasselbeck. Hasselbeck wants to hurry him to the line because he thinks he might have fumbled. Yeah, it's close. He doesn't want anybody to have time to look at the review or the replay. But here it is. Now the officials meet, and they change their ruling, their initial ruling, and call it a fumble. Recovery Dallas. You'll be looking at that. Here it is, the ruling on the field, it's a fumble. And we're gonna, Skandrick coming in and forcing that fumble, which was recovered by Selvi of the Cowboys. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. It's Dallas's ball. It's close, Phil. You know, some might look at it and say, I think the hand was just starting to go forward. Yeah, you think that, but it, it, the ball is knocked loose, it looks like, from Skandrick from behind. And here's the recovery. Again, initially, that's why they didn't really quite play it out. He was slammed down, but they, they ruled it initially as an incomplete pass. Three officials met and changed it to a fumble. Mike carries back in New York. Did you see it that way too, Mike? Well, what I saw is that if I was reviewing this, I would have to leave whatever they called on the field as the play that stands. Two-part review, the pass, fumble, they ruled fumble. There was a clear recovery, that's the way it goes. It was that close, all right. Look at Randall working through a very small crack and picking up about three. Thank you, Mike Carey. Thank you, Mike. Well, Orlando Skandrick, soon as you start talking about it, he makes a play. And listen, he, he might have one of the hardest jobs on the team. He plays outside on first and second downs or whatever, and on third down, one of the few guys in the league that plays the third receiver or the slot receiver, which is extremely hard to do for a corner. He's a vocal leader, and he was telling us yesterday, we're still not there yet. we got to create more turnovers. Got to get better. Well, they've created three turnovers in this game as quarter number three is down to its final seconds. Cowboys up 35 nothing, and inside of the 40 with that throw to Bryant. Hey, these are two pretty good corners they're catching these passes against. With Tony Romo, it's like he hands the football to the receivers. Catching it is quite easy the way he's throwing the football. Romo, 18 out of 19, 218 yards, four touchdowns, and setting today, again, the Cowboy franchise record for yardage. Well, the Cowboys are just a quarter away from erupting into Texas-sized celebration. The first postseason will be cinched. 15 minutes out, their first since 09. The division title will belong to them, and by virtue of that, the Eagles will be eliminated. They needed the Cowboys to lose here today to still have a chance. Pushed back by the Colts. That was Randall getting Set back a couple. Here is the touchdown pass from Romo to Witten. Really good job finding Witten. Nice little double move down the middle. That's why he was open. Good job by Tony Romo looking it off. Romo needs one more completion to qualify for the single game completion percentage record in NFL history. He's not gonna come here. Instead, he's gonna slide at the 30 with a marker in the secondary down. 
holding. Number 50, defense. Five-yard penalty enforced from the end of the run. First down. Well, Jarrell Freeman, number 50, the linebacker against Jason Witten. Pretty tough. Outside release, going to come back inside, and that contact is past five yards. Single game completion record. Again, you have to have 20 attempts. Kurt Warner for Arizona back in 2009 in a game. He was 24 of 26. Almost 18 out of 19. Randall and Adams read that one for another loss. I'm not trying to be funny, but safest place in his stadium for Tony Romo is uh, right where he is. Not getting hit, lots of protection, a lot of time to throw, and then even when he is pressured, massive holes for him to run up into. By the way, he came into this game tied with George Blanda on the all-time NFL touchdown list. Tied for 23rd with 236. He's moved past already in this game. Not only Blanda, then he was tied with, but Jim Kelly and Lynn Dawson. Hey, Ernie, Ernie, step right. Drew Dawson. And the 20th all time. Number of touchdown passes. And there is his second incompletion. Nearly a pick, and it could have been a run back for Sergio Brown. Yeah, I think he saw the blitz coming, and I don't know if Cole Beasley saw it. Comes from this side. Here it comes, and then he's expecting a, an adjustment to the route, and he did not get it. Well, they've got a bad case of the drops on the offensive side, and now the defense gets into the act. That was the first incompletion. Remember, Werner coming in and knocking that his first drive of the game, and just a moment ago, his second. So Tony's slumping now down to 90% for the afternoon. <laughs> He had hit 16 straight before that last one. As Randall takes a couple of Colts with him, and the ball comes out. Cowboys are there for the recovery, it appeared. Well, had it for a moment. Randall got the first down yardage, then the ball popped out. And it stays up. They rule it. Jackson with the recovery. It's a 12 yard run and a fumble. Looks like Williams was going to recover for the Cowboys, but Jackson wrestled it away from him. The Cowboys have just turned it over for the first time today. Not the only thing that's gone wrong for him. Randall coughed it up after picking up a first down on the run. Hey, the Colts have not been shut out in a regular season game in 21 years. That's a span of 335 games. They got 12 and a half minutes to try to extend that streak. Put something up. Here's the fumble. Adams took it out of his hands. You know, look, I don't know how Williams, a receiver, didn't get full control of that. Yeah. Slipped out once he got on it. It looked like he had it, and good job by Mike Adams, who Chuck Magano said has really come in and done a fabulous job. That was his words, directing that defense when they need it. Second and ten to the ground with Herring. Herring, who started to see action just after midseason with the injury to Ahmad Bradshaw. And here's a look at today's nationwide sky cam. As you look at it, talk to me a little bit about, they know they're going to need to run the football in the playoffs. They were really emphasizing this in meeting with us last night. They wanted, if this game had become like a normal game, they were going to be ground heavy today. They have Heron, they have Richardson. Can that backfield get it done in the postseason? Well, you know, you, you don't blame the backfield. My answer is probably not. You're going to have to go with who you are, and that's a passing football team, and you put the football in the hands of Andrew Luck. Ball in the hands of Hasselbeck on third and eight, and over the head it sails past Hakeem Nix. You know, Jim, that's just not something you turn on. They haven't run the football well all year long. They've had a few spurts where they were, I guess, consistent. But when the competition gets better, they have a harder time running the football. And, hey, you, you throw it, 
and you try to keep the defense honest by running the football once you get to the playoffs. McAfee. And Harris on the run. It's a pass the 50. 44 yard punt and they continue to push and shove a lot of frustration out on the field for one side. There's a little Christmas spirit over in the great city of Fort Worth Sundance Square. Here we are at AT&T Stadium right between Fort Worth and Dallas in Arlington. Tony Romo has been taken out after leading this team to 35 plus point, 35 points or more for the third straight game. Whedon in at quarterback. And Randall, there's not only Romo is finished for the day, but we understand Murray is also finished. Brandon Whedon, who uh, filled in for Tony in a game this season against Arizona. And the Cardinals came in here and beat the Cowboys in this stadium. He also came in the uh, previous week against the Redskins back on October 27th. Played very well against the Redskins. You know, get your first start with a new team against the Arizona Cardinals. You saw them a couple weeks ago. That defense, the blitzing, pretty tough to make your first start against that team. Second and six. And Randall. Let's go back to Tracy. Yes, that's right, Jim. Looks as though DeMarco Murray's day is finally done. Gloves off, hat on, talking to players on the sideline, smiling, everyone asking him if he's okay. He's just saying, yeah, I feel okay. The biggest smile for Tony Romo, Romo certainly. No reason to keep him out there right now, guys. 22 carries, 58 yards for Murray, which means he'll go into week 17 in Washington. You need 29 yards to break the Cowboys single season rush mark of Emmett. Third and six, Reed has Williams. Touchdown, Dallas. Perfect strike from Brandon Wheaton. Well, that was beautiful. Top of your screen, Terrence Williams. And, you know, Greg Toller's expecting, hey, backup quarterback, probably going to throw it short. But the game plan is, if you're going to bump the wide receivers, they're going to go deep. Roger Staubach visiting with Governor Christie. Emmett and Jerry Jones. Christie grew up as a huge Cowboy fan and especially a fan of Roger Staubach's. Has a signed football from Roger in his office back in New Jersey. 42 to nothing. Can you believe it? Whedon to Williams, who is in for the second time today. Terrence Williams. The Cowboys have never shut out an opponent while scoring more than 40 points. And Cribs. Reach back behind the inline to catch it and then run it out. The early headlines, the Steelers make the postseason with the win over the Chiefs. They're going to have a huge game against Cincinnati next week. Green Bay's in. They qualify, and next week they'll play the Lions for the NFC North title. Cam Newton and the Panthers beat the Browns today in Carolina and Atlanta. Week 17 will be playing for the NFC South crown. Of course, if the, uh, it'll be the Green Bay Packers hosting the Lions next week. Here's Hasselbeck. And Knicks is pushed back by Wilbur and others like a preseason game now the Cowboys have brought in all the reserves we saw the backup quarterback Whedon that would see a lot of backup defensive players too oh, 
Got to feel good for Brandon Whedon to come out here and get a chance to throw a strike down the field like that from outside of 40. Second and 11. Max raining down in the area of where Nix was the target. I think, uh, you know, the Dallas Cowboys very lucky and fortunate to have Brandon Whedon as their backup. I like his talent. He's got a tremendous arm. You saw that. Fits this offense very well. Personal foul, face mask, number 20 defense. 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. Patman called for that, and here's the last time we talked about it. It's been 21 years since the Colts were last shut out. And it was a game against the Patriots. At the old stadium up there in Foxborough. Mm, you can tell it was cold. Yep. First down, Hasselbeck gets it to Doyle. And Doyle able to stay on his feet for a first down. It's the third longest streak right now in the league. Longest streak without being shut out. The 49ers go all the way back to... You know, this third longest of all time. You see the 49ers had a streak from 77 through 04. The Denver streak is active. Colts have the third longest streak. Tipton is in it running back. The rookie from Central Michigan. Zerlin Tipton. That's back. Able to get away from the contact. And that's Fleener. Tackled down by Spillman. Week 16 continues Sunday night football tonight. 8.30 Eastern on NBC Seattle at Arizona. And then tomorrow on ESPN, a big one. Denver and Cincinnati, they both are. Starting to look at week 17. And Seattle was to win this game tonight against Arizona. If that happens, then you'll have the West up for grabs next week. The North and the South. Only the Cowboys would have clinched a division. Here's Hasselbeck with a flag on the field. Able to get it over to Tipton. Of course, on the NFC side. Illegal use of the hands to the face, number 20 defense. Five-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. Here's a look at the NFC. And again, Seattle and Arizona. We've already given the Cowboys the win to get up to 11-4 and four now in the year. Dallas beat Seattle earlier in the year at Seattle, so they'll be rooting for the Seahawks to win tonight. They'd like to get matched up, if you will, record-wise with the Seahawks because they would have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. They lost to Arizona, the Cowboys did. Of course, Philadelphia, because we've, uh, again, already established that. Cowboys with the win. Philadelphia is eliminated. Half a quarter to go. Colts at the 33 of Dallas. Knicks. Spot them near the first. On the AFC side, New England, Denver, and Indianapolis had already claimed their divisions before this week. Pittsburgh qualifies for the playoffs. San Diego, you never would have believed it at one point last night, down 21. They would come out of the weekend. They not only would win that game, they'd come out of the weekend with the sixth position as Baltimore lost to, to Houston. What a story that is with Case Keenum. Being signed this week, coming back home and leading the Texans to victory today. And that's Hasselback being sacked. It's Wilbur. And San Diego, if it wins next week at Kansas City, it will be in the playoffs as a wild card. By the way, Baltimore, Buffalo. Houston and Kansas City. Or all these teams needing some help, especially Buffalo, because uh, the Bills are down out in Oakland, heading to the fourth. They're out if they lose that game, the Bills. 
Second and 17. It's to Fleener. You know, Fleener told us something yesterday in a meeting. It was very interesting. And he came in as a second round pick. Team A to block said Stanford. Everybody knows those two go way back. He had a hard time adapting to the NFL football until about this year. Smart guy, grew up in the Chicago area. Missed the stripes on the football. College, they have the stripes. Easy to see when it comes down the field. And he's had a very hard time tracking the football. Now look at those things. They rub them up. They're almost black, some of the, the footballs of the team. So he has adjusted. He's adjusted to the league well. He's definitely worthy, worthy of a second-round pick. He's played well. Yes, he has been really coming on, seeing and tracking the ball better as that pass was going back to Fleener. But three Cowboys in the area. Fourth and ten. And they're going to go for it. Rod Marinelli, the old coach, in a historian of the game who keeps photos of the old Cowboys in the meeting rooms. He wants that shutout. Five and a half to go. Wants his defense. Look how fired up he is. <laughs> yeah, if you break an assignment, he's going to let you know. He goes, they're men. you got to teach them so they can learn. Timeout Colts. They know how to take his coaching. The Colts decide to take the timeout, set up a play here, fourth and ten coming up. I'd would, kick a field goal. You just avoid the yeah, embarrassment of a shutout. I absolutely would. I wouldn't hesitate. I'd send them out there, kick the field goal, and you go, well, that's not good gamesmanship. Well, you know what? What is game, gamesmanship? Cowboys threw a long pass down the field, up 35 to nothing. Cowboys back off the blitz, and Hesselbeck goes deep, and the Cowboys get the interception. It's Carr, but a flag is in the end zone. And Marinelli knows what that means in all likelihood. Pass interference, number 39 defense. Penalties decline. So Carr not only doesn't get the pick, he gets called for the infraction. They got that mixed up. It, he means 39 defense. He was thinking the other way. Yeah, there's a lot of oh, you can see the left arm of Brandon Carr out there against Reggie Wayne. Yeah, Bill Levy obviously did not mean the penalty is declined. They're set up at the one. Yeah, just too much contact. Left arm in front of Reggie Wayne. Pretty easy call. They've got a backup defensive player, Andrew Jackson, in the backfield, 54. Hasselback throws, and it's a touchdown for the Colts. Zerlin Tipton. Well, you got black backup players in there, and when you do, plays like this are going to work. Down on the goal line, there's no way you had a chance to work on this during the week. It's like a preseason game. Play action passes in the flat down on the goal line against backup players always work. Adam Vinatieri, who has not been seen since the opening. Well, hasn't been seen at all. He doesn't even handle the kickoff chores, so that's uh, a first appearance for Vinatieri, who has not missed a kick all season. Extra point good. 5.24 to go, and... McAfee and the Colts are looking like they're going to go ahead and onside kick it here, Phil. Yeah, me, I'm a little surprised, but you play it out to the end, that's what Chuck Pagano's telling his team. Well, they're not doing it after all. They kick it right over the head of Harris. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 Minutes. And Scott Pelley reporting from Cuba, followed by new episodes of Undercover Boss, the Minimalist and CSI tonight, only CBS. Undercover boss, the uh, mayor of Pittsburgh is the undercover boss. I thought that was Jim Rohr. <laughs> he's not undercover, he's just the boss. <laughs> yeah. Runs the city. Under, under! 
course, that city is uh, happy today after the Steelers took care of business against Kansas City. First and ten. How about a little free D look at that Whedon touchdown throw, Phil? Beautiful throw down the right sideline. Look at the arc of the football. It's Brandon Whedon. You can never say he can throw a pretty pass. Like I said, he's an excellent downfield thrower. Just in a terrible situation in Cleveland. Like so many franchises, they expect you to be drafted, come in, and get it done right away. Watch him coming, Jay. So it's always easy. Blame the quarterback and get another. Second and six. And Dunbar runs in to Sergio Brown right away. And the Colts are going to see their four-game win streak come to a close. Well, the story of this game today was Dallas's offensive line to start. Protecting Tony Romo so well that it allowed extra time. He looked around the field. He made the plays. No pass rush by the Colts. But Dallas's defense, that's what it, that has to get them excited, the fact that they played so well against an offense that can put up a lot of points. And Dunbar, you're going to mark him a little short of the first the last time Chuck Pagano came in here to take on the Cowboys, he was the defensive coordinator with the Ravens going against the offensive coordinator of the Cowboys that day, Jason Garrett. It was the last game ever played at Old Texas Stadium. Right. And Pagano and the Ravens came in, and as he said it, we spoiled their party. Yeah, Baltimore well. won at 33-24. to 24. That was at the end of the 08 season. The Cowboys came in here in 09. But Pagano and the Colts didn't come in here and spoil any Cowboy party today. That's... The Cowboys were out to celebrate if they could pull it off, win a division title. Next Sunday, through flexible scheduling, the NFL and CBS will deliver a doubleheader. Not exactly sure of the times and the sequencing of these games, but we do know this. It'll all start at noon Eastern time with JP and Tony and all the crew. They're already back there preparing for next week's NFL today at noon Eastern time. This is what the AFC playoff picture looks like. That Cincinnati-Denver game tomorrow night looms large. Tipton is brought down. Tackled by Mincy. Look at the NFC side. You see Atlanta over there in the hunt. Atlanta will play Carolina. In fact, the Panthers will be in Atlanta, and they will play for the division title. Hard to believe. Just the way both teams struggled all year long, and you have a chance to win your division and go to the playoffs. 13. Tipton down by Wilbur. He loses a helmet for a moment. By the way, Seattle, you saw an X by the Seahawks name. They actually got into the playoffs, qualified by virtue of this Cowboys victory. It just when you start shaking out all of the tiebreakers and everything that comes out of it. You see DeMarco Murray visiting with the Cowboys longtime executive. <laughs> Communications director Rich Dalrymple. Just cool it out on the bench. It was a hard day for Rich. You know, he put a lot of work in and he needed a break. Somebody get him some Gatorade. How about a Gatorade bath for Rich? Well, I would like that. At the two-minute warning on this 60-yard-long screen, they posted this. And this crowd erupted. No nail-biting for week 17 this year for the Cowboys. Neutral zone infraction, number 93 defense, five yard penalty, third down. Still a lot to settle as far as the seedings at the top of the NFC, and so we don't know what the Cowboys situation will be. Of course, they know they've got at least one home game. 
as a division champ. What do you think about their prospects? Uh, this Cowboy team, it's for real. Solid defense, but it's their offensive line. We talked about it, Jim. They dictate the game so much, you got to play on their terms. And when you do that, it's hard to beat anybody in this league. Third and four. And that's Doyle bouncing off the first hit and plowing ahead for another five. And again tonight on CBS, all new 60 Minutes, then Undercover Boss, the final season of The Mentalist and CSI, all new. I know this, the Indianapolis Colts, they got a lot of thinking to do how they're going to go into this postseason. They're going to take on Tennessee next week, week 17. As they now, with this loss, the guarantee to playing on the wild card weekend as a host, will the Colts will be either a three or a four. Well, you know, they played a good offense here today, and they tried two strategies. One, to be aggressive. That didn't work. And then when they set back, that one didn't work either. So when you get in the playoffs, especially, you know, the teams we're talking about, Denver, when you talk about Pittsburgh, New England, those are all really good offenses. Toss over to Tipton. Man, rookie out of Central Michigan who scored the Colts touchdown just a short while ago, picks up another 12. Time of year, too, when people are going to really start locking in on things such as the most valuable player, the coach of the year, DeMarco Murray. You know, he, he, some lists have had him up there. He's going to win by a landslide the rushing title. Then you got Jason Garrett, who I haven't seen his name. Again, the storyline behind him always seems to be about what are the Cowboys going to do and the doom and gloom stuff. Well, so many. You've got to put Garrett and Arians right at the top. Yeah, they're not Jim Caldwell. They're Coach not going to put Jason Garrett up there because they're all naysayers to begin with. So when you're against him, how can you turn around and say, hey, what a great job he's done? Most people who were against the Cowboys are still waiting for that one game when it falls apart, and that's just the way it is. To the end zone, and incomplete. At the last moment, Sterling Moore stripped it out of Doyle's hands. That was a really good job. Sterling Moore covering the outside receiver, but his other job is to watch the inside receiver, and that's Doyle. So he has to come in and stop that type of pass. A seam. Good play by Sterling Moore. How about some Cowboy consideration on that MVP side with uh, Romo now up to 32 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. I know you've got Rodgers and J.J. Watt and Peyton and Tom Brady. Tony Romo would be right up there in my eyes, what he's overcome, how he's played. Tipton. Seconds to go. Jason Garrett and the Cowboys. One last play, and it'll be official. Hasselback to Nix. He's out of bounds. And the Dallas Cowboys are the NFC East champions. All you heard about coming in, this was the last ranked defense a year ago, and they lost guys like Sean Lee to Marcus Ware, then to free agency. The coach getting the chance to enjoy the ice bath. And he deserves it. Well, he does. The organization, the team, Jason Garrett, they've done a tremendous job with this team to really bring it from nowhere to be 11-4, quite an accomplishment. The 9 CBS 60 Minutes, undercover boss, the medalist, CSI, and Des Bryant is jumping for joy. Tony Romo has a record day here. 90% throwing, franchise record yardage, four touchdowns. Dallas demolishes Indianapolis 42 to 7. For Phil and Tracy, Jim Nance saying so long from Dallas. You've been watching the NFL on CBS, and right now, let's go to James Brown in New York.